I can't think of many dishes more hearty and heartwarming than a good bowl of meaty chili. And this is the best chili I've ever made. Honestly, this bowl is probably the best chili I've ever made. I love this stuff. And I'm also making a traditional Knoxville style. If you are wondering why there's lettuce in the chili, just stay tuned and you'll figure out why. A special thanks to Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. Brooklyn Bedding has been in the mattress industry for over 25 years. They are known for top of the line comfort and quality, but without the luxury price tag. They pride themselves on delivering the best sleep ever with mattresses custom made by the best craftsmen in the industry. Plus, if you're in the US, they ship conveniently to you for free from their Arizona factory. They offer different firmness options, heights and dimensions, even non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. They really have something for everyone. I personally needed to find comfortable kids' mattresses for their twin bunk beds at a reasonable price. Based on this, I got the BB Kids Twin Mattresses. I love these mattresses. They fit perfectly and are the perfect thickness not to interfere with the functionality of the rails on the upper bunk beds. The girls love their new mattresses and they are so comfortable. I love how affordable they were and how easy it was to set them up. On top of that, Brooklyn Bedding ships free for anyone in the U.S. Also with Brooklyn Bedding, you get a free 120 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. Since Brooklyn Bedding owns its manufacturing facility, they are able to ensure that the entire facility is free of fiberglass. As you may have seen in the news or on TikTok recently, there have been a number of health issues and lawsuits related to fiberglass and mattresses. Unlike other brands, Brooklyn Bedding mattresses do not contain fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. The best part of this is that Brooklyn Bedding mattresses are designed in Arizona by master craftsmen who have been building mattresses for over 25 years. They are all assembled and shipped right from their Arizona factory, which means that they are able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman driving up the cost. I love our Brooklyn Bedding mattresses, and I think that you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out brooklynbedding.com. Purchasing was so simple and I didn't have to go to a mattress store. I just went to brooklynbedding.com, selected the mattress I wanted, and it was delivered right to my door. You can click on the links below and get 30% off your mattress with code BATESKITCHEN on either site. One of my family favorites is chili, and this is my absolute favorite chili recipe. I make it not too spicy because the kids don't love something that's super spicy, but we're gonna have a jalapeno pepper, a poblano pepper, um, some tomatoes, these are more for the garnish, um, garlic and onion. Really simple. We're gonna get all this in a bowl and make some chili. Okay, so we're gonna start with our onion. It seems like everything I cook in the fall starts with an onion. And I put my little wet paper towel beside it to try to help. It helps a little bit, but it's not as much as you guys said it would. And for cutting my onion, just like we've seen, I'm just gonna make a, a dice. I'm going almost to the back here. I wish I could show you, but I can't do that, so. And guys, this thing is never, there's no trick that's completely fail safe for me. No matter how close I get that wet paper towel. Don't cut when you can't see what you're doing. I don't trust my sense of feel that much. Whoo, that is a good onion. Put that in over in a bowl real quick. So we've got our onion, got our chili seasoning. You wanna cut the onion first because I don't wanna wipe my eyes after I cut the pepper. This thing's, thing's gonna be rough. So I use a jalapeno. This is a little hotter, a little spicier. And then the poblano, this is a little milder. I love the blend of the two of them. You can use any blend of peppers. A lot of people use bell peppers. Those are very sweet and not near as intense as a jalapeno, but I like the flavor that a jalapeno gives. Another way that you can make them a little milder, if you've got a torch or even if you have a gas um, range, you can torch or kind of sear the outside of the peppers. You can smoke them. There's a lot of different things you can do 
to make the peppers a little more milder. But keeping the seeds out is one thing that will make it milder. And then of course, the more you cook it down before you put it in your chili, the milder it's gonna be as well. For me, I only just use the one jalapeno because I know the kids don't love the spice and it is the spicier of the peppers I use. If you're looking for really spicy and you wanna go more, hey, grab yourself some habaneros. There's a lot of spicier peppers you can use. That'll make it even spicier chili. Growing up, I always loved super spicy food. Now, I still love super spicy food. It just is a little harder to sleep at night afterwards. So if you are cutting jalapenos, your hands are all over this. Uh, be careful what you do afterwards. Yourself or other people may thank you for washing your hands before you touch anything sensitive. And then we're just gonna cut these into strips here and I'm going to dice them up. You know, if somebody does smoke, my wife does not like the taste of smoke. Smoke you about four of them poblanos, or two jalapenos and two poblanos, and make this chili with some smoked peppers and see what you think about that. Got our little peppers. The last thing we're gonna need to go in the pot will be our garlic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start my hot pot preheating before I mince all this up, and you could also Again, I say it every time, just use a pep, uh, one of them garlic press thingies. It's perfectly fine. I just like to cut because I got my knife here. So I got my pot preheating, dice these up real quick, and we're gonna get on the cook. So I actually found out my other video, I've been pronouncing this wrong. It's Emil Henry. I think that's right, or somebody's gonna tell me I'm wrong again, but I love it. Again, my little porcelain, super light, and it's actually hot, it's been preheating and you can still grab these porcelain handles. You don't have to have a lot of oil or grease for this because the beef is gonna make its own, but I'm gonna put a little in there and just kind of run it around. A little ghee, it's, as you can see, this is very hot because when your ghee is smoking like that, that is, a, that is a lot of smoke. And we're just gonna set the whole thing, two and a quarter pounds of beef down in there, and you can see it filling up with the grease from the hamburger meat. This is an 80-20 blend, so it's gonna make plenty of plenty of grease. And it's starting to brown. I'm just letting the whole block start to brown and then I'll start chopping it up here in just a second. I haven't really turned it yet, I've just chopped it. And I'm going to go ahead, I did not put salt in my chili seasoning because that's all my spice blend. I'm gonna add my salt in as I go and salt everything pretty good. Just some beautiful browning on the other side of that. If you can see that there in the pot, just really beautiful browning. Those little chunks of beef and that browning are gonna just add so much flavor to this chili. Okay, so as soon as the meat turns brown and all the pink's gone, this stuff is gonna cook a lot longer. We're just really wanting to get that good browning. I'm gonna pull all this out. I got a couple bowls, cause it's actually, you could use less meat, but I am a meat lover. And so I like my chili to be full of meat. I don't love beans but my wife and kids love beans, so I give them, a, I'm gonna give them more beans than I like in my chili. I normally just do one small can of chili beans, but we're gonna put two in this one for them. So now, got that little bit of oil in there, we're gonna dump these onions in, and we're gonna dump the peppers in. We can use enough of this to kind of scrape out a lot of the brown that's forming around the pan here little flavor bits. We've got, if we needed to deglaze right here, we could use a little beef broth to help us deglaze. You can already start smelling the flavor of those peppers here. And of course, we're gonna add our salt. Because I didn't add salt in my seasoning, I wanna put a lot of salt at every step and kinda of taste it as I go. And this right here, just gonna wait until these onions get translucent in the bottom here and these peppers get a little softer because that'll also will take some of that heat out of the peppers a little bit. I was actually getting a little hurry here on camera. Sometimes I have to remind myself to slow down. Um, one thing you do wanna do is you want to season your meat. I, I put the salt in, but I forgot to add some of the chili seasonings. I normally add a couple tablespoons of the chili seasonings to the meat as it browns after I start turning it. And that really does, I think, enhance the flavor of the meat. So our onions are kind of translucent here. Our peppers are soft. We're gonna add in our garlic, give it about 30 to 60 seconds till this turns aromatic. And then we're gonna move on here. 
So now, and I, I'm not super particular about my order, but I'm gonna add in a little flour. Dust it with a little flour. Stir it in well. It's not as much as I would use to make like a heavy roux, but it's just a little thickener. And then I'm going to add in my seasonings. We've got our chili powder, our cocoa powder, our anko chili pepper, our black pepper, our paprika, and our cayenne pepper. I'm gonna add in some tomato paste. And I go ahead when you do this and have your beef broth ready because it'll start browning and sticking to the bottom, which is fine. Don't want it to burn, but it's gonna make a great flavor base here as it browns, similar to a thick roux. And that's just nothing but just loaded with flavor. And we're gonna start pouring in this broth and deglazing all this brown off the bottom. And that is just a load, a buttload of chili flavor right there. And it smells amazing. I said I don't like hot stuff. I used to drink this stuff as a kid. I love Tabasco sauce. It's got just such a unique flavor that goes so well with chili. So we won't tell anybody about that. So we're gonna add our crushed tomatoes. It's just one big can of crushed tomatoes there. I like the crushed tomatoes because it's a little more tomatoey flavor than just tomato juice. But you can also use a, some tomato juice if you want. The kids don't love the diced tomatoes. I normally do a big, the big can, but this is just one of the small 12 ounce cans because they complain about them. And I always do the really big ones so they're easier to pick out. But if I'm making this for myself, I use the big 14 ounce can or the big 18 ounce can, whatever that is, 28 ounce can. And I did check, it is the 28 ounce can I use of both the crushed tomatoes and the diced tomatoes. But we shortened that up for the kids because they don't love tomatoes. We are gonna add our chili beans now. And I wanna be careful now that the beans are in here because if you get heavy with them, they're gonna, they're gonna break and you're just gonna have squashed beans. So once you put them in, all your stirring needs to be very gentle in your pot. This is, uh, we've got it back to a little simmer. I'm bubbling up on the sides here. And this time I'm just gonna pour my beef back in. And you can see I added some of that seasoning to the beef. It's kind of like a pot roast, but you can kind of get an idea and see if you need salt, if you need pepper, if you need more of the cocoa powder, any of the other seasonings you need, you'll kind of feel that. If you need any garlic powder, onion powder, um, things like that, you can pretty much taste that. And like I said, I like a meaty chili. You can just see. I mean, it's not even finished simmering down. It'll get thicker. And that's just such a beautiful bowl of chili right there. So while our chili's cooking, we've got a couple more things to do. And interestingly enough, you're looking here saying, what is he doing with lettuce? So at the 1982 World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, they're widely credited with coming up with a new snack that is now known as Petro's. You put your chili in a bowl, you put the corn chips on the bottom, and you put your chili in, then you top it with lettuce, sour cream, tomatoes, cheese, and jalapeno peppers. I got my little Mount Olive jalapeno slices over here. The pickled ones I like them better because they're not as intense as the uh, fresh jalapeno. And so that is the way I always ate chili. And the first couple times I shared this, people were like, ooh, no, lettuce on chili, what in the world are you doing? So I wondered why everybody didn't eat chili like this and started researching and found out it's actually a Tennessee thing that uh, started at the 1982 World's Fair, which is long before I was born, so I can't take any credit for it, but I sure do enjoy it. So we're gonna slice up our uh, tomato and our lettuce here, make like a fine angel hair and then our chili will be ready in just a little bit of time. This will go really nicely. We'll just top it with this and it adds a nice, cool, crisp bite to steaming hot chili with, with everything there. I use canned tomatoes in the chili and that's great, but I really like a fresh tomato on top. It looks better for one and it really just tastes so good. I'm just gonna do one since I'm doing one little bowl here. I'll do the other one when I actually feed the kids later tonight with the chili because tomatoes, if they just sit there like that, are gonna get really runny and watery, and we don't want that when it comes time. So I've got my lettuce chopped, got some cheese grated, got my tomatoes chopped, and got my Fritos here, some jalapeno peppers, some sour cream, and it's time to go get our chili off the stove. So this is the way to actually make a proper Petro. There's actually a restaurant called Petro's around here. I don't know if they've got them where you're at or not that makes these steel, but the proper way to do it is Corn chips on the bottom. A big ladle full of chili on top. 
maybe a couple ladlefuls, and just look at that thick. That is what you want your chili to be. It's thick, it's soupy, it's loaded with chunks of meaty goodness and some beans in there for the people that like beans. And even just like that, you could go to eating this chili and it would be spectacular. So we'll put a little bit of lettuce in here. Should've got the little squirt thing of sour cream. That would look so cool. A little dollop of sour cream there. And then we'll put some tomatoes down. Should have probably done these a little sooner. A little bit of cheddar cheese right in the middle on top. And then you can't go wrong. I use these jalapenos because they're a lot milder. The pickled jalapenos are a lot milder and they have that pickled flavor that I think is just so much better than the regular jalapeno. We'll sprinkle these around over here with our tomatoes. There you have a Tennessee Petro. Well, this is the moment I've been waiting for. I say that every episode, but this is, this is the reason I cook, so that I can eat it. Let's get a big bite of this stuff. Got some chili, got some jalapeno, got some tomato. Unfortunately, there's a bean on my spoon, but I'm gonna leave it. And, mm. This is a properly made East Tennessee bowl of chili. With just the perfect amount of spice. Mm. If you want your family to thank me and you both, make this chili. They'll thank us both later.